had a guess. Mac Double Tap. Uh, so, one of the things I get asked about a lot is what trigger I run in my guns. And, uh, you know, what trigger jobs have I done, so on and so forth. So, the first thing I want to show you guys is what you need to do first, in my honest opinion. Uh, this does not require that you disassemble the gun other than, you know, taking the upper from the lower, you know, like you would for cleaning. Uh, this is either called a paracord or shoestring trigger job. And what you're going to do is, see, normally in the trigger components, you know, it, the, the notch in the hammer and the, you know, the, the point of the trigger that make connection is when you're in normal firing mode, you know, five, seven pounds of, you know, spring pressure is all that force them into contact position. So honestly, five to seven pounds, which is your standard military trigger, is, is a weight you want for a combat level weapon system. You do not want a one or two or three pound trigger on, uh, on a combat gun, if you do, that means you're probably stupid. And, uh, you know, in a, in a, in a, in a true time is life situation, you know, you don't want things with, you know, that require microscopic amounts of pressure to go off because, you know, you're going to be excited and nervous and shaken and, you know, not to mention when you start grinding or polishing or filing on these trigger mechanisms, uh, uh, you, you can change geometry and, uh, you know, maybe make the gun unsafe. So, uh, this is the first thing that you should do. Uh, honestly, this will fix 90% of your trigger problems. Uh, now if you just happen to have some gun with a junk trigger or that, you know, is breaking at 10 or 12 pounds, yeah, it might be time to think about you know, polishing it or, I, it, honestly, it'd just be cheaper to buy a new mil-spec trigger group, uh, or more effective, I don't know about cheaper, uh, but what we're gonna do here is, because those two points are normally, you know, have five to seven pounds of friction, we are going to put all the friction on that point that you can put with a piece of string, and uh, we're going to change that five or seven pounds of friction into, you know, 30, 40, 50, 60. I'm, I can't tell you how much you actually exert on it. But uh, what this is going to do is force these two places to polish themselves. And they're going to polish themselves to one another, which is perfect. And like I said, it's free. It doesn't cost you a dime. Uh, it's probably, I mean, it's stuff you can find around the house. I mean, the first thing you need, good old-fashioned piece of paracord, shoestring works. Uh, if you can't find either of them, I would suggest you go to work and get your boss's cell phone charging cord. Uh, that's what I would use as a third option. Uh, the other thing you're going to need is just, you know, a little piece of uh, paper towel. Uh, toilet paper, if you're out of those, uh, go to your wife or your girlfriend's, you know, naughty drawer and get her favorite pair of white panties and uh, use them. She'll understand. I, I promise you, it'll be fine. So I'm going to get set up and show you how to do this uh, and uh, get on to the next step. Okay, now that we're set up, we've got the receivers separated and... Uh, so I'm going to show you how to set this up. This is actually a reshoot. And I'm telling you, I'm already having problems with doing this with the phone. I've got to, see, I've got to get a camera. Uh, my other camera died, if you don't know. Uh, so here's what we're going to do. You're going to cram paper towel down that hole. Because we don't want the hammer to move forward and smash your... Uh, your magazine release and crap, crack it or chip it or cause any problems. The other reason I'm doing this in a uh, second video, oh, I had an idea. It might help me. 
The other reason I'm doing this in a second video is because I used a black paracord and you truly couldn't see what was going on. Uh, so the next thing, so I went out to the shop and I found myself a piece of red 14 gauge wire. So, and I, I do apologize and I know there's going to be all these crackheads are going to be like, man, you should have got it set up, man. It's free knowledge. If you don't like it, go somewhere else. I'm tired of people always crying about my cinematography. Man, if I was making million dollar movies, they wouldn't be on YouTube for free. Let me assure you. Uh, so, what we're going to do, we're not going to take any of this apart. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to just go ahead and put your shoelace, paracord, boss's cell phone charger whatever underneath your trigger like so and you're going to pull up on it and at the same time which i can't do this in this video i just don't have enough hands as you're pulling up on it as hard as you can you're gonna pull the trigger you're gonna have to exert a lot of pressure on the trigger i promise you uh that's a good thing because what you're doing is in one trigger pull you're simulating five, six, seven hundred rounds of ammunition downrange. Uh, because you'll hear people say, you know, after I shot two or three, four thousand rounds out of the gun, it started to, you know, the trigger got better. That's because it polished itself over time. So what we're going to do is we are going to drastically speed up this polishing process. Uh, and like I said, it polishes the, uh, the hammer and the trigger their connecting points to each other. There's no way to over polish it. There's no way to, you know, change the geometry of that mechanism, therefore making it unsafe. It's going to do exactly what it needs to do, and it's going to do it, uh, you know, in a pretty expedient manner. Uh, number of times to do this until you're happy with it. Uh, honestly, you do this two, maybe three times, and I mean two, maybe three trigger pulls, you're going to have a noticeable difference in your trigger. Seriously. Uh, a lot of people are going to read that or see, hear that and go, yeah, whatever. No, seriously, do it. Uh, it it's free. Two or three trigger pulls, instant difference. Instant. It's not going to stack near as, de as hard. Uh, it, it'll probably even lighten it up if you've got a trigger pull gauge, half a pound, quarter pound. It's going to lighten it up a little bit, but uh, do it until you're happy with it. Uh, is there probably a point where it's not going to help you any further? Yes, there is. I mean, I'm sure there's a point where you're there. Uh, I don't know what that is. I know that this is virtually all I do to my middle spec guns. This is virtually all I do to my three gun guns. Uh you know, there is a, uh, and I will probably eventually go ahead and show you this. There is a way to, uh, there is a way to bend those springs down in there and like drastically lighten up a tree. But honestly, I have yet to find a reason to do that on a gun that's not, I'm not using for precision long range. So uh, give this a shot, guys. Upward pressure, pull the trigger. Do not tie off your receiver to something. And, you know, what you can exert with your arm pressure is all you need. You do not need mechanical, uh, any kind of mechanical advantage on this other than what you can do with your hands and, you know, holding the gun in between your knees or whatever you need to do. Uh, do not, don't think you're going to get a better polish out of, you know, putting a gun in a vise and, you know, pulling up on your hammer with, you know, a snatch block or something. Don't do something stupid like that. Uh, honest to God, two or three trigger pulls, you will notice a difference. I promise you. Uh, 
it just varies from part from gun to gun how many times I do it. I mean, I I've, I've sat in front of a thirty minute television show and just did it over and over and over for a really bad trigger group a long time ago, and uh, this one, which like I said, I've already reshot this. Uh, this one I've already done, and I maybe did it fifteen times, and the trigger is so much better. So uh, appreciate you guys watching. Like, share, and subscribe. Questions below. Uh, foreshadowing. There's something coming.